So in Muslims in America before Columbus, and you will find this detailed in several books, you will find this detailed more prominently, of course, with deeper roots with Dr. Abdullah Hakim Quick. You will find it also in a book called They Came Before Columbus with uh, Ivan Van Sertima. Long story short, because we don't have a lot of time. I need a... We're good? Okay. <laughs> That Muslims in America before Columbus, I'm going to start with this particular story. There's some actually that are dated from the 9th and 10th century, but I'm going to start with this one because it's one of my favorites. And it's because we're actually someone f we're familiar with Mansa Musa. That one actually does make the pages of the American history books. They, they will mention Mansa Musa in some counties. And so... Mansa Musa was actually known to be so wealthy, one of the wealthiest Muslims in the world. He was known to be responsible for the, for Timbuktu and the great scholars that came to Timbuktu and spread Islamic scholarship throughout West Africa and into East Africa and into Central Africa. We know about his Hajj and how he was so wealthy and he gave so much charity that it changed the currency. But we never asked the question, how did Mansa Musa become king? How did he become a leader? It's actually because of his brother. His brother before him was actually an ex, uh, as an adventurer. He was a voyager. And so he was extremely interested in that which was west to him. He was extremely interested in what so he had heard sayings about a land beyond the ocean. And so he initially sent 200 ships to the coast of America. And he sent those 200 ships with enough food to last them for over a year. And so when he, when actually he waited for those ships to return and only one ship returned. And when this sailor gave his account, he said, he said, oh, leader Omensa, basically the, a storm came. And in this large storm, we begin to see sinks fall into like a cyclone. And so when we saw them fall, I was able to turn my ship around and I came back. And so Mansa Abu Bakr, who was the brother of Mansa Musa and also the second son of Shek and Tajob, the, his, the great historian and scholar of West Africa. When he heard this, he said, I know there's something beyond the storm. So what he decided was, he said, I'm going to send 2,000 ships this time. And so with 1,000 ships of men and women, and another thousand full of their resources, their supplies, and their food to last them, they set sail to America. Now, there are many accounts, questions whether or not they actually arrived in America, and it, is, it isn't until much later in history that we actually find out that they do. The first one arrives in the map called the Piri's Rice map that is found in Turkey. And interestingly about this map is that there is Mandinkin script written upon it. Mandinkin script from the same, from the same tribe that Mansa Abu Bakr was from. But even more significant than, than that was the details of this map had shown details that no other map before it had mentioned. That it had details of the internal landscape of the Mississippi River of mountains and mountain ranges inside of America. And so as, it as they begin to research this map a little bit further, what they discover is that Mansa Abu Bakr was one, at least one of those who contributed to this map. Later on, we actually find in America as well as in South America, some gold coins. And these coins actually have Mandinka written on them, and we find out that they're from the time of Mansa Abu Bakr. Another thing happens is that when Columbus actually does come to America, he can't say that he discovered, but when he does actually arrive to America, one of the things that he finds is he finds a, uh, the tip of a spear. And the Native Americans called the spear guanin. Why is that important? Because guanin was actually a Mandinkan word for gold. And so in this, the tip of the spear, what was known about the people of Mansa Abu Bakr, of, of Abu Bakr is that the, the spear they would use to make it, 60% of it was made from gold, another portion from silver, and another portion from copper. And this was something that was unique to their people. And guanin is actually a West African term, as I mentioned before, to mean gold. 
Another thing is that later on they discover in Arizona, a, in a cave in Arizona, they found a particular cave painting. And the cave painting, initially they can't, they thought this was maybe some ancient Native American language, turned out it's Mandinkin. And what does it say? It says the elephants are sick. What is significant about the elephants are sick is that there are no elephants that are, you, elephants are not native to America. So these elephants actually arrived with, it was known that Mansa Abu Bakr actually brought elephants with him because he thought, I also want to bring the, 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 some of the animals from this land and cultivate it here if this is where we're going to be. And so this is the beginning, actually, of many stories. Later on, we find in Cherokee narratives where there were not only uh, stories of West Africans having come, lived, married, uh, conducted business with Native Americans who were, uh, on, who were living in what we now know today as America, but also there were found Sharia documents of contracts, marriage contracts, business contracts, land ownership. And so this is extremely important when we're talking about Muslims, not only when we're talking about Muslims being indigenous to America because these West Africans didn't live in a bubble, right? They immediately interacted and engaged and married with Native Americans who were here on the soil, making many, 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 and we won't, I don't have enough time to go into that. Inshallah, maybe we can have a Native American history day. Love. And so, but we do know that there are multiple nations that came in contact and actually converted to Islam. Many of them, for example, even the, the word Tallahassee is a Native American word for Allah Ta'ala will deliver us in the future.